Hello, good morning. Good morning. It is the 31st of July 2023. Welcome to the Mid Morning Show. I'm your host Mary Oswero and I am Regina Ayanai. I'm so happy you are able to join us this morning. We are glad we are here with you. This is a farmers media where we connect, learn and grow. You can tag along with us in our social media platforms. We are live on YouTube at a Farmers Media. We are live on Facebook at a Farmers Media, on Twitter at a Farmers with a Z underscore media and on our website www.afarmersmedia.com. Be sure to listen to us because we are going to talk about very good topics, a topic that will enable you to learn, mm -hmm. a topic that will grow you in different ways, comment and like, and also send in your questions. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that you are able to be here with us. Today we are going to have our part two of the topic that we did on Thursday, pest and disease control. Yeah. That will be our main topic of today. We are doing the part two. We promised to be back on Friday, but uh, we apologize due to unavoidable circumstances. We were not able to go on air on Friday, but now we are back today. We have the part two of our topic that we had on Thursday. But uh, before we get into the topic, good Let's, morning. Morning. How are you? I'm very good. Are How you are you for today? I'm good. I'm good. Are you ready for today? Yeah, I'm very ready for today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready to educate our our viewers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, let's dive into the weather updates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So today the weather updates here in Kajiado, it is 22 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. It is partly cloudy, and then in Kisumu, it is 31 degrees Celsius most sunny mm -hmm. and uh, in course it is 27 degrees celsius it is most cloudy mm -hmm. and then we have in rift valley the current temperature in rift valley is uh, 61 degrees mm. yeah finally kisumu is back to the kisumu yeah. i used to know yeah it's I back told to you, sunny i guys. told you kisumu is always sunny and you are telling me oh cloudy cloudy now you see yeah today. like the, the rest of the past one week mm -hmm. it has been most cloudy, partly cloudy, and I was like, "Wow, so Kisumu is not that sunny as I wow. expected." And then today, boom, <laughs> it is sunny again. Kisumu is back to where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, if at all we have not mentioned where you're coming from, you can mm -hmm. tell us in the comment section how your place is. Mm -hmm. uh, today we were just uh, able to mention a few. So yeah. you can tell us in the comment section whether your place is raining. Maybe to go up and kuna kuingine kuna nyesha. Tell us if you have showers of blessings in your area. Uh -huh. Yeah. Or even if it is sunny like Kisumu. You said coast is? Coast is uh, most cloudy today. Hmm. Yeah. Coast is a rudy place in Afakua. A rudy. Anyway, you guys send us the weather updates from your areas because uh, we might find that there is someone who has a shamba there mm -hmm. in that area. And uh, when he or she hears that, uh, it is rainy there. Yes. So he might be able to go there and uh, do his farming. Mm -hmm. Actually, there are, farmers, there are farmers who can have their farms in Kajiado mm -hmm. and maybe they come from Kisumu. Yes. So we are here. If you know... Uh, if you if you are maybe from a place that you haven't mentioned, mm -hmm. you can tell us in the comment section mm -hmm. so that we get to tell other farmers who yeah. don't know uh, the climate change. Do I say the climate or the weather? Last the, time the, someone told us in the comment section the difference between the climate and the weather. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. the weather the, the weather changes, but the climate doesn't like change like automatically. Yeah. The weather can change any time, any day, but climate cannot change like just within one day and then it is like that mm. yeah okay tag along with us we are here we have a great information that we'd like to share with you as our farmer you are our guest yeah. we are your host yes yes so our main topic of today is pest and disease control this mm -hmm. remember this is the part two of what we had on thursday if you haven't watched the part one uh we have it on our facebook mm -hmm. uh and on our youtube at a farmer's media you can go back watch it it was on thursday when was the date? On Thursday? On Thursday, uh, it was on 26th, 27th, 28th. You're not even sure. It was 20, <laughs> uh, on Thursday, yeah. on Thursday, it was, uh, it was on 27th. 27th? Yes. I hope you are not lying to our viewers. No, I'm <laughs> not lying. It was on 27th. Yes, we had our first show on 27th on mm -hmm. Thursday last week where we did uh, the part one of pest and disease control. You can always go back there and watch the part one so that when you get to watch the part two, you're not confused. You know what we are talking about. Yeah. We talked about the pest and disease control part one of it. Uh, we measured on maize and even today we are still measuring on maize. So mm -hmm. ensure you are here with us. Continue tuning in, like, 
comment, uh, send us your feedbacks, your questions. We are here to answer all of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And be ready, be ready because it's about to go down. We yes. are going to talk about an amazing topic. You'll be able to learn different types of pests mm -hmm. that affect our farms, mm -hmm. uh, our maize farms. And um, can we start or do you have anything else to say before we start? No, we can start. So let's dive into the pests that affect our maize. So if you're a maize farmer, be ready. Be ready. Be ready. To Continue hear. watching. Yeah. Don't leave the page. Continue watching a farmer's media so that you get to learn more yeah. on uh, maize farming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In decades, there has been this enemy of maize, enemy of farmers mm -hmm. called fall armyworm. Mm -hmm. Do you know fall armyworm? Have you heard about fall armyworm? Yeah, I think I've heard of it. And when I was researching, I saw a. Uh, how it affects maize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can tell us more. Okay, so uh, for lamium, they mainly feed on maize leaves. Mm -hmm. And they also, they get their name because they march from one field to another. You know, when they find that this field uh, is almost, uh, they almost finished everything in that field, they move from that field and go to another. Or when they realize that they have become so many in that field, they move to other fields. So these, uh, these fall armyworm, they can lead to a lot of yield loss. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can lose uh, many yields due to these fall armyworm because they feed uh, very fast. They eat a lot of uh, harvest. Mm -hmm. So fall armyworm prefer densely populated uh, field. Mm -hmm. So when you see, that is why we insisted in the previous show mm -hmm. on the spacing of maize plants. Mm -hmm. You know, Maize plants are supposed to be spaced because uh, the pests like this fall armyworm. They move from one maize plant to another. When you, when, when, because they prefer the densely populated area. When you put your maize together, like there is no spacing, they will be able to connect very easily from this maize plant to this maize plant. Hence, are uh, spreading very fast. Uh, uh, I know you've also studied about uh, fall armyworm mm -hmm. and you know the effect it causes, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, make sure that you space your maize plant to reduce the chance of fall armyworm infestation. Yeah, actually, when you talk about spacing, uh, just imagine having uh, your maize plant, Nazime, Shikana, Shikana, they are so close to each other, you mm -hmm. haven't spaced right. Mm -hmm. And you, you just had Ayan calling them armyworms. Yes. Definitely, they are matching. Yes. <laughs> Ziki, Shikana, Shikana, your maids, when they are so close to each other, they are attached. Mm -hmm. It will be so easy for, for the fall armyworms to move from one plant to mm -hmm. another. Yeah. So she's so right when she's telling you that you should space your maize plants so yeah. when you're growing them. Uh -huh. And you know that it's not only, uh, the, the spacing doesn't only uh, get rid of these armyworms or other types of pests. Mm -hmm. It is also important to space your crops because uh, there is... Uh, it reduces the competition between the resources and the plants. Mm. You know, when the spacing is is right mm. and it's correct, you'll be able to your plants will be able to get enough nutrients. Mm. They'll be able to be resistant to pests because they won't be able to be infected in any way through the spread of pests. Mm. The pests move from one plant to another mm. through because of lack of spacing. Mm. So through that, if you space your crops well, you will be able to access these, uh, your plant will be able to access enough nutrients and also there won't be a lot of spread of pests and diseases. Mm. I'm sure as a farmer, you don't want your plants to share the nutrients 50-50 because mm -hmm. the moment they are sharing uh, the nutrients uh, on a 50-50 basis, mm -hmm. uh, definitely they won't be so healthy and you won't have a good harvesting. Yes. That's why we advise you to have enough spacing uh, so that each and every crop, each and every plant gets enough nutrients mm. so that you get the right harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our next, uh, or you have anything to add? No, not really. Okay. okay. Our next uh, pest is called corn earworm. I'm mm. sure when you hear corn earworm, it's a very, it's a funny name actually because yes. I was also wondering why it's called ear. Yeah. Because the only ear you know is our ears with the human body. Does but the animal have ears? Like the pest have ears? Uh, <laughs> we need to research about that. You can tell us in the comments. I, I've never seen, I've never imagined that. A, no, I've a never pest seen a pest ears. having ears. Okay. What is the pest even hearing? <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's a pest called corn earworm. Uh, mm -hmm. When you hear corn, definitely you know that I'm talking about the fruits of the Actually, the kennels, they're called kennels, mm -hmm. the fruits of the corn. Mm -hmm. Is to mind, mind. 
yes, the ones that have already been removed from the cob. Okay. Uh, basically, the corn earworm, they are common pests of corn, especially on sweet corn varieties. Mm -hmm. uh, an example of a sweet corn variety is the one that you use for popcorns. That one is a sweet corn variety. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's planted even here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I recently saw a corn plant. Wow, where yeah. do you see? Uh, a corn plant, like yeah, the one that produces popcorn. Yeah, for popcorns. Wow, where yeah, do you the see sweet it? corn. Uh, uh, there's a farmer who just planted it uh, from where I come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it just looks like the kawaida maize mm -hmm. that we know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't even know that it's a uh, sweet corn. But the seeds are always different. The seeds yeah, the seeds now are, are the small, small seeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for okay. popcorns. Yeah. Yeah. So these corn earworms mainly attack the, the sweet corns. Like, for example, the popcorns. They feed on the silk and kernels of a corn, mm -hmm. uh, making it unmarketable. Mm -hmm. So when the, when the corn earworms, they get into the... The corn seeds, we call them the seeds. Mm -hmm. They feed on them, and definitely, the moment uh, your corns have been fed on by a worm, mm -hmm. nobody will buy it. Yes. Yeah, you won't have any market for it. Nobody wants a, a bad product or a product that has been attacked by a pest. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to buy something that is clean and fresh. Of course. And uh, and everybody wants a product that is that has good quality. Mm -hmm. So, so when you have uh, your corns that have been fed on by a corn earworm, it won't be marketable. Yeah, because when you go to the markets, you'll see that a lot of farmers look at the products very keenly mm -hmm. before buying them. Someone can be able to buy this corn and go to use it as a seed in his farm or her farm. So when you take these uh, uh, these pest uh, infested uh, seeds mm -hmm. to the market, nobody will be able to buy them and you will experience a lot of loss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, do you have anything else? No, add? you can't continue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another pest is called European corn borer. Mm -hmm. uh, these uh, corn borers, uh, the larvae bow into the stalk. They bow into the stalk or the ear of the plant, mm -hmm. causing the physical damage, uh, making the plant more prone to diseases. So these, uh, they bow, the larvae bows into the seed. Mm -hmm. When they bow the seed, the larvae, they, they cause the seed to, to get infected. Mm -hmm. The old maize plant can get infected due to this corn, uh, corn European borer, European corn borer. Mm -hmm. So they can also interrupt the plant's ability to transport water and nutrients mm -hmm. through this because they are cutting those cycles of transporting water from the plant to the other parts of the plant. Mm -hmm. You know, water transports, uh, the plant transports water in different parts of the plant from the root mm -hmm. to the stem to the leaves. You see, when they infest in one area, maybe in the ear of the Plant, mm -hmm. the leaf. Yeah, the leaf. You, the ear of the plant. You just talked about an ear. Ear, ear of the ear corn. Yeah. <laughs> the ear of the corn. That is the leaf. Yes. When they infest in that place, mm -hmm. they get rid of the that uh, transportation cycle of water and nutrients. Mm -hmm. So these things are very dangerous. And also, if you want to cope with this kind of uh, European corn borers, mm -hmm. you should be able to use uh, your re resistant varieties. We were talking about the invention that was invented, the gene editing. Yeah. We were talking about uh, someone can plant two different types of plant. Mm -hmm. One of the plants should be uh, the gene has been has undergone through the gene editing process, mm -hmm. and then plant to the other variety. This one plant that has undergone this genetic process can be is a resistant plant. Mm -hmm. So when you mix with other plants that are not resistant they can be able to chase away the insects or the pesticides. Mm -hmm. So that is one way of preventing these corn, European corn borer. And then the other is close, closely monitoring the plant. Mm -hmm. Be sure that your plants are doing well in the field by going around, just look at them, how are they doing. Or you can use also the drone. You are talking about the drone. It's even easier. You can survey your field in less than 30 minutes using the drone. You'll be able to see uh, this area needs water, this area lacks water, and be able to provide this water to your plants so that your field will continue growing well. Actually, talking about the genetic, what did you just call it? Genetic? The gene editing. The gene editing. Yeah, invention. Invention. Yeah. Uh, it just reminded me of, uh, there was a time we visited some farm in Moroni. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was in Moroni. Mm -hmm. uh, they were they were planting mangoes. Mm -hmm. They had mango trees, but now they were using uh, different types of mangoes. Two different types of mangoes. Mm -hmm. You see this one, the kawaida one that we have in our villages. 
Okay. Yes, I don't know if those mangoes they just grow to, because there are areas that you just find the mangoes that you don't even know planted. Like the kamba, the the kamba places. Uh, they are calling where? No, I was told by my friend that uh-huh. they 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 just sprout out of nowhere. Nobody. Yes. So, but now the 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 kamba the kamba mangoes. Mm-hmm. I feel that they are good ones. Now you can mm-hmm. imagine you take the ones that. They, have, okay, maybe in my place, mm-hmm. I don't even know the name of that, those mangoes because we just find them. We don't oh, know the ones that, that are around. I don't the know. Kienyeji ones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Those we, I'll mangoes. definitely get a name next time. Those mm-hmm. ones. And you take with the Kamba ones, these ones that are, uh, become so, where they, they change the color to, is it yellow or light orange mm-hmm. when, they, when they are ripening? Now they take the, the seedlings mm-hmm. of both type of th- the two types of mangoes mm-hmm. and then there's a way they tie them together mm-hmm. yes when they're planting them there's a way they tie them together mm-hmm. i'll definitely i'll look for that video and show you mm-hmm. in our next show maybe next time when you talk about mangoes you mix them and then when they're growing they'll have a they'll have a different type of product a good a good quality Mango, okay, yes. yeah, yeah good quality. I, I, i've known uh I studied that in agriculture back in high school mm-hmm. about the mixing of plants. I don't know, you cut the stem of which plant and then you combine with the other and mm-hmm. then it produces a good, a more even uh, better plant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so today we have a, a website that uh, we'd like you to really get to know about. It's called mm-hmm. Sprout. It's a good website. It's a, it's a farmer's platform. Yeah, it's a website for a farmer's platform. As a farmer who likes content, either posting or reviewing agricultural content, uh, you can visit Sprout website. Uh, the Sprout website is www.sproutopencontent.com. Yeah. You get to learn so much. I'll repeat the website www.sproutopencontent.com. You, you'll get to learn so much. Uh, yes. Uh, you maybe if you have content that you want to post, or even you have uh something that you you've always wanted to know and yeah. you want to view it concerning agriculture, concerning farming, Sprout is there for you. The Sprout website is there for you. Mm-hmm. You can definitely visit the website, which is www.sproutopencontent.com, and get to learn a lot. Actually, it's a website. Uh, like uh it's just a farmer's platform mm-hmm. where they can post their content actually now you can easily post your content if you have something that you'd like people to know mm-hmm. other farmers to get to know mm-hmm. or to learn from you you can use proud as the best website to post it mm-hmm. and you can also learn from other farmers mm-hmm. uh what they do mm-hmm. that you're not doing yeah. or what they do right that you're not doing right you get to learn so much from them you can even meet uh these pests and disease stuff mm-hmm. uh in that in that website yeah. yeah and you know that sprout is a very good platform mm-hmm. a platform that educates farmers not only educate farmers but also provide farmers with these income opportunities mm-hmm. you might go to that website you'll be able to learn how to generate income uh, through farming or funding or sponsorship mm-hmm. or any other type of education mm-hmm. they can offer there so be ready to go to this sprout website because i believe that you are going to learn a lot from it you will get to interact with different farmers is out there yeah and connect even and learn yeah and again i encourage you i highly encourage you and i recommend this this sprout website because it's the best yeah i will say it's the best there's always the best but now sprout is the best of the best mm-hmm. when you have content that you want to it's the best of the best when you have something that you want to view uh, something uh, in agriculture that you want to view it is the best of the best yes. so definitely sprout is the way to go when you want uh, to have a content that you want to share out there to teach people or if you have if you want to learn something from them you can definitely go to sprout and learn from other farmers yeah and www.sproutopencontent.com is the website yeah and as a farmer uh, sprout is a platform that will enable you to get a lot of experience in terms of watching those videos they are posting connecting with experts and also listening to other farmers outside there listening to their success stories and listening to what they are doing through that you'll be able to get idea on what really sprouting mm-hmm. is and I'm sure that you'll be you'll get a hook on it mm. and you'll love it. Yeah. That's uh that's all about Sprout. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you visit the website. 
you tell us how good it is and yeah. if it is good for you as a farmer mm-hmm. that's why we are encouraging you uh to get into the website mm-hmm. and get to learn more just like we have said so usini angushe as a farmer don't let me down ensure you visit the website yeah. definitely you come back and tell me more in the comment section how the website has really been yeah and it is very you. beneficial in many ways be it in providing information be it in education be it in providing ideas be it equipping uh, the passion of the farmers yeah so be sure you are going to learn something from sprout www.sproutopencontent.com so mm-hmm. next we have a very interesting guest mm-hmm. <laughs> it has corn root worm yeah actually these corns i think they're just these these pests they're just uh attacking the moment that they attack one specific part mm-hmm. of a maize plant mm-hmm. that they plant finish is it. gone yes it's gone for even good. if they touch the root <laughs> or even the leaf mm-hmm. definitely the the maize plant will be affected yeah another yeah. enemy of the farmers mm-hmm. <laughs> now corn root worm there are two types or species of corn root worm actually mm-hmm. we have the western corn root worm mm-hmm. and the northern corn root worm when we are talking mm-hmm. about maize we always have to mention western what are western na maindi na northern mm-hmm. northern <laughs> where okay but now you know western what we are mainly what do they like ugali mm-hmm. now yeah i had to talk about western mm-hmm. now corn root worm they are western corn root worm and northern corn root worm uh, they feed mainly on roots maybe uh, like you've just had uh, the name called corn root worm so mm-hmm. definitely you just when you hear the root worm you just know it's uh, it feeds mainly on the roots yes. uh, making the plant to become unstable mm-hmm. if you have visited a farm and you realize that uh, your maize are so weak have experienced that mm-hmm. your maize are so weak unaona huko chini kuna venye this way it has burnt imechomeka mm-hmm. kidogo it has been affected by a pest maybe you didn't know the name yeah. um, i'm here with the name it's called corn root worm yeah the moment that that pest attacks your maize plant mm-hmm. even if the wind comes to just find all your maize down yeah you know that worm mm-hmm. is very is a very dangerous worm mm-hmm. you know when your plants are very young especially maize they are always it is always crucial to take good care of them mm-hmm. and closely monitor them mm-hmm. because these kind of pests such as root worm mm-hmm. uh, they cut the stems of these young plants mm-hmm. so when they cut the not the stems i mean the, the roots, roots of yeah. these young plants making them even So when the wind blows you find all your crops down just yeah. as Mary said. Yes. Maybe you can pick up some then you realize all your all your crops are down. You mm-hmm. start blaming people. Yes. Don't blame people. Just no control from attack to your farm. But mm-hmm. here at the farmers media we are here to give you the solutions. After we told you the problem. Yeah. We'll always, there's nothing that doesn't have a solution. The only yeah. thing that doesn't have a solution is death. But yeah. now uh, here in the farmers video we are just talking about pests and diseases and farming and agriculture we always have solutions so we'll be talking about solutions later on yeah, yeah that's what corn root worm does to your maize yeah and as we always say that prevention is better than cure we talked about all the processes in the previous part of the show in the previous segment of last week on that thing mm-hmm. uh, we talked about the pre- preparation of your of your land uh, how to prevent this pest before planting your products your um, your plants so when i say prevention is better than cure be sure that you prevent this pest by uh, practicing all the things we said in the past uh, show like preparing your soil in a well uh, way using organic fertilizers mm-hmm. so make sure you have put into place all these practices to prevent this disease from spreading yeah so uh, we were talking uh, another pest is cutworms uh they are uh, cutworms affect also maize plants mm-hmm. and um you find that the larvae of various species of moles are formed in these maize plants mm-hmm. thus destroying it so the cutworms um they can cause a uh, seed damage to a young plant corn plant by uh, cutting them off the base you find that your plant is laying down it has been cut off the base cutworms mm-hmm. cutworms are very dangerous also mm-hmm. uh pests all these pests we have mentioned are very very dangerous and you don't want losses as a farmer so cutworms uh, they find that uh, you find that the crops have uh are burnt just maybe just, just like Mary said mm-hmm. they are burnt on one side so that when the wind comes they tend to burn 
is as a result of these pests such as cutworm because they are eating that part. Yeah. Okay. You can see the cutworms are also very very dangerous. Yeah. Uh we have uh, another pest that is so common. If at all you went to high school in Western or Nyanza, mm -hmm. I think this is the most common pest you've ever met in your Okay. It's called weevils. Yeah. But then we we realize that we have two types of weevils. I didn't know, but now I know. We have two types of weevils. Mm -hmm. The maize weevils and the granary weevils. But first of all, let me take you through the maize weevils. Mm -hmm. uh, maize weevils is a major pest. Actually, you, you are familiar with the name weevils. It's the main attacker of, of maize, especially now. Yeah. Once they are after post-harvesting, once they are out of the chamber. Yeah. So, I was telling about the gideri we used to eat in high school. Uh, You'll find these weevils inside the maze. And you'd eat them. Uh, what can we do? Like, we used to eat, the, ignore others, eat, uh, remove others. You uh, just eat. Uh, me personally, <laughs> I used to call them proteins. Yeah, I think proteins to my... Yes. I don't know if I, to, if I was right, but <laughs> I used to have them. We used and, to say that also. <laughs> and they're bitter. When you're eating them in gideri, mm -hmm. they're bitter. There's just nothing they can do to all that maize. Whenever they, now the maize have weevils, there's nothing you can do. Yes. If you are preparing so much gideri, uh, like they were preparing back in high school. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, the maize weevils, it's a major pest of, of stored maize. This one's attacked stored maize a lot. Mm -hmm. Adult weevils are about an eight inch long. Mm -hmm. You know how long that is. And tell us, if you ever see the maize weevils, don't mix the maize weevils with the granary weevils. The maize, the maize weevils are an eight inch long and they are mm -hmm. dark brown. Mm -hmm. The female lay eggs in small holes that they chew in the kennels. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you what kennels are. Uh, kennels are the fruits of the corn. Yes. Like, uto to mind it, to to dogo that you see, the ones that now you remove them from the maize cob. Yeah. Those are the kennels. So yeah, the ones that are attached in the maize cob. Yes. Now, these kennels, uh, these weevils, they eat, they, they dig holes. They say they dig, they try they create or dig holes inside those kennels. And then they yeah. get inside, they eat the products that are inside mm -hmm. the, the main seeds, the kennels. Mm -hmm. uh, once they are inside there, they also lay eggs because definitely they have to reproduce. They want to be many in order for them, in order for attacking to be easy. Mm -hmm. They reproduce, the female lay eggs in small holes uh, that they chew in the kennels. Uh, when the larva hatch, they feed on the kennel from the inside, which can lead to significant losses in grain weight. You realize mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the maize seeds or the kennels that have been attacked by the weevils, uh, they are light, the ones that have been, because they are eating from the inside. Mm -hmm. And the inside is somehow heavy. Mm -hmm. Now they become light once the products that are inside have been eaten. Mm -hmm. That That's what makes the... The kennels to be so so light mm -hmm. on the main seats. Yes. Uh, once they are light, definitely there's nothing you can take to the market. Yeah. They also affect you. If you're a farmer who is going to sell, they'll affect you. And even if you're a farmer who is eating the maize at home or eating the corn at home, mm -hmm. you can't eat such a you can't eat uh products that have been affected by by in, by pests yes. yeah. Yeah. yeah because they are light now they don't after you can't you are not able to take them to the portion mill to make flour because what are you even going to take to the portion mill yeah they're nothing. already light the products that could have been used to make the maize flour mm -hmm. have already been eaten by the weevils now it's, it just makes you go mm -hmm. at losses yeah and we know that weevils are the most common uh, types of uh, insects or pest pests mm -hmm. Uh, everybody, I think, knows what weevils are. Mm -hmm. As long as you are a farmer and you have or you have ever harvested your maize or you are ever engaged in this uh, mm -hmm. maize farming, of course you have seen a weevil. Yeah. That, is, that takes us to another type of weevil, mm -hmm. that is granary weevil. They are similar in size and uh, appearance to maize weevils. Mm -hmm. They are just one the same thing, but mm -hmm. they, they are similar in appearance, mm -hmm. but different in another way. Like they have ability to fly. They can fly. Yeah. I think the black ones fly. Those are the ones we used to eat. Yeah. <laughs> so granary weevils can fly. They, so through this flying, they go from one maize plant to another. This uh, ability of flying makes them able to even destroy more fields. And also their cycle is similar to the weevils. Mm -hmm. uh, the females lay eggs inside the kernels and the larvae feeds on the those uh, eggs. Mm -hmm. Feeds on the kernels from the inside. So when they eat, they feed these uh, these uh, kernels.
from the inside the maize becomes light so you end up uh, losing a lot of produce and also uh, they spread more slowly than maize weevils mm -hmm. so maize weevils are more dangerous than granary weevils mm -hmm. because they the granary weevils spread slowly but maize weevils spread in large numbers so that is about granary weevils. have you ever had have you ever had the sound of the granary weevils how they sting <laughs> they have a choir. <laughs> once your once your maze have been attacked by the granary weevils, mm. when you visit that store, mm. you just hear them sing. Have you heard them singing? I haven't. Hey, yeah, yeah. The, the, the sound. <laughs> the, the, I don't know. That is a sound. choir. <laughs> oh, for you it's a choir. Okay. It's a choir, yeah, right? It makes so much noise. If if you're in a silent place and your bedroom is next to that uh, that granary, mm. I don't think you'd sleep in peace. The next morning you'll just wake up to take your maze to the side. They are buzzing like the insects. Ah, the insects that the, have a the, 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 it's called what? The, the bees. flies. The flies and the bees. Eh, those ones are fadali. <laughs> if you sleep next to a next to a granary where the granary maze has attached the maze and stuff, mm. you won't sleep well. The next morning, they have, a, they have a, a very beautiful choir, by the way. Okay. They sing so much. And they fly. That's why... Uh, you find that in most cases, once your maize have been attacked by the granary maize, mm -hmm. uh, you tend to be taking them out in the sun to dry so that they fly. Mm -hmm. Because the moment they are flying, you just ensure that they don't fly back to the granary. Yes. It's those things they are also wise. And you know that uh, for you to manage these kind of weevils, uh, these kind of pests and diseases, there are several practices that you should practice to mm -hmm. enable you to curb these kind of pests. Yeah, first of all, when you talk about the management of weevils, mm -hmm. uh, I am talking about prevention. First of all, prevention. The most effective strategy is to prevent infestation in the first place. You don't mm -hmm. allow the, the pest to get, the weevils to get into your maze. Yeah. Uh, by doing this, first of all, you clean the storage facility. If you have a granary, you, you ensure that you clean that place. Anywhere yeah. that you, you, you'll be stor storing your maze, sorry, ensure that you clean it is clean and dry before you even dry your maze. Ensure that that place is clean and dry and free from the pests. Because yeah. you can clean and dry and then the pests get in there to wait for your maze because they know this is the house. This yes. is where we get food every yeah. day. So, and even before storing your greens, ensure you dry them properly. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so we talk about packaging as you continue. But first of all, prevention is the key. Yeah, so prevention, I'll, I'll tell you again this one more time about prevention is better than cure if you prevent all these things from happening to your plants i'm sure you won't lose any produce yeah but if you wait for a cure then you lose a lot from your side mm -hmm. because first of all you'll be able to you will buy medicine like mm -hmm. the the insect side the pest side for these plants that is losing money yeah you see but if you prevent this from happening to your plants at the early stage you will gain profits mm -hmm. that takes us to the managing another management of weevils mm -hmm. that is temperature control so we have realized that uh, according to research it is said that uh, weevils are less active in cooler temperatures so make sure when you store your grains, uh, put them in cooler temperatures. Mm -hmm. Because when they are in cooler temperatures, uh, they are less active. They can't be able to eat a lot of your produce. Mm -hmm. They will even eat even lesser. Mm -hmm. So always store your produce, be it in what? In what circumstances? Always store them in uh, cooler temperatures. And then store, uh, stored grain should be kept, uh, to, should be kept to cool. Mm -hmm. Make sure that uh, they are in a cool place. It's not like a hot environment because if you put them in a hot environment, they'll be eaten by weevils. And they'll also sweat. So at the moment you are, the moment your grain starts sweating, that's why that's why they that's how they encourage diseases to attack them. Yeah, because they uh, they love that uh, environment. that environment mm -hmm. where there is that uh, the where is there is that moisture. Yeah, where is there that hot moisture? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Be careful on how you store your grains. Uh, we were talking in the previ previous chapter about the storage of maize. We were talking about drying them before storing them. If you put them when they are wet, you'll find that all your maize in that sack have, is rotten. Mm -hmm. And you can also find that it is uh, it has formed some, t some kind of mold or other things that are very harmful mm -hmm. 
two people. The, those ones are the ones that bring aflatoxin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the aflatoxin <laughs> ones. We were talking about aflatoxins that causes liver damage. Yes. Yeah, and you can die out of eating such maize mm. but affected with aflatoxins. Actually, when drying maize, when you talk about drying maize, I see some people drying them in the sun. That is the most common way of drying maize. Yeah. But uh, I just heard that there are also machines that you can use to dry maize. But as here, when you go to the market, yeah. you hear a, a, a buyer asking a, asking a farmer or, or even the seller, is this a maker? Is this a jua or a steamer? Mm-hmm. Now, this steamer part, I haven't understood it well. Yeah. If you understand that steamer part, uh, the machine that is used to dry the maize, you can tell us in the comment section, maybe it yeah. will help other farmers mm-hmm. uh, who are so lazy or even are not able to to dry the or, or even let me just, let me not use the word lazy. Mm-hmm. They don't have time. Maybe mm-hmm. they don't have time and uh, they want to take their products to the market. Yeah, you can but tell us about the machine that use is used to dry the maize. But I've heard before that the machine that are used to dry maize, like uh, according to people in our area, mm-hmm. they talk about usinilete my India steamer. Yes. Like I was like, wh- why? Because Why are you it saying is dry- that? Uh, I, I hear people saying that uh, you may be a steamer, the ones that are dry, they don't know using which machine. Uh, it doesn't, uh, like when you're boiling it even for dairy, like they don't boil it faster. So yes. you end up eating a lot of, wasting a lot of fuel. Wasting a lot of fuel. That is, that is the main complaint mm-hmm. that I've had. But again, uh, the sun, they're drying the sun. I think it is the easiest method. And also the cheapest method one can ever employ. Mm-hmm. Because that's why a lot of people are practicing. Because the sun is uh, something natural mm-hmm. that you can use to dry your maize. It is a, a, an activity that has been going on for generations. Mm-hmm. Even the people from the past used to do that. I was going, I went yesterday to a museum, mm-hmm. to a national uh, Kenya museum, mm-hmm. and I saw these uh, Homo sapiens or what. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are in that museum's the statues oh, and what uh-huh. they were feeding on. And uh, one of the methods actually I saw mm-hmm. that they used to preserve their food um, was sun drying, like drying them uh, on the sun before storing them. Mm-hmm. So I saw that it was interesting and also it is still interesting because you can dry your maize using um, sun if you can't afford those kinds of machinery. Because of, I know they are very expensive and not all the farmers are able to And not dry all their farmers maize. like them, by the way. Mm-hmm. If you visit Kitale, mm-hmm. you know Kitale is known for growing maize. Mm-hmm. Uh, during the the harvesting, actually, mm-hmm. once they have harvested and they've removed the the seeds, the kernels from the cob, mm-hmm. you realize that they they just take a big field. Mm-hmm. Actually, I see them. I see uh, those fields next to the road. They mm-hmm. they use those fields mm-hmm. to dry their maize. On one or two, maybe if you go mingi, they just pour them uh, on some. Uh, do we call them big polythenes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they dry their maize there. Wow. Okay. Yes. Anyway, uh, the next way that you can use to prevent the weevils from attacking uh, your maize grains mm-hmm. are pesticides. Mm-hmm. Now, when I talk about pesticides, uh, this is what I mean. Insecticides can be used to control weevils. However, they must be used carefully in accordance uh, with the regulations. When I talk about being careful and using them according to the regulations, so when you visit an agrovet, mm-hmm. definitely there is an expert in that agrovet or someone who has specialized on on uh, these chemicals that we can use in our farms or even that we can use on the pests and diseases. Mm-hmm. When they're selling for you a product or even a chemical that you use uh, on your on your maize grains, they give you instructions. Mm-hmm. As a farmer, ensure you follow those instructions. If you have to use them, ensure you follow those instructions mm-hmm. carefully. Usijifanye expert, wewe mwenyewe, don't be your own expert. Like, I know this. I know how to <laughs> yes. do this. Don't be your own expert. Ensure you explain to the expert in the agrovet or even the specialist, ensure you explain what is happening in your farm mm-hmm. or even what is happening. Actually, when you're talking about weevils, uh, definitely we have the maize grains now at home. Mm-hmm. Ensure you explain very well what's happening to your grains, what you want to do mm-hmm. in order for you to pre- uh, in order for you to help your grains, in order for you to help yourself as a farmer not to go uh, at losses. Mm-hmm. Ensure you explain well so that you're given the right chemical or the right insecticide to use on your maize grain. Uh, when you talk about uh, uh, insecticides, mm-hmm. there's, there's, uh, there's this chemical called 
actelic actelic mm. that we used back at home okay tell us about that actelic yes. But now you can't use it. <laughs> Let me just talk about Ash again <laughs> today. <laughs> okay. When you want to store your maize, this is how we do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe this is how other farmers also do it. But mm-hmm. uh, if you have a different way of doing it, you can tell us in the comment section. When when you want to store your grains, mm-hmm. uh, first of all, mm-hmm. you, you take ash. Mm-hmm. We have ash. After having the ash, you have the acrylic. Mm-hmm. So once your maize are already dry, mm-hmm. The way you take the ash and then you pour on the dry grains. Sijui ni sema kusubua. What is kusubua in English? <laughs> you scrub. What yeah, scrubbing. Okay. Seriously, scrubbing on the maize with the ash. Mm-hmm. You even like the dry, the, the dry, dry ones. Okay. Yes, use the ash on the dry grains already. You okay. even step on them. The you're in here. I hear my people saying, eh, can you get you I haven't heard of that, but I said you are not. <laughs> and then, uh, you even have used the acrylic, mm-hmm. now, according to uh, how you've been instructed from mm-hmm. the agrovet, mm-hmm. use the acrylic. Acrylic uh, is a chemical that uh, are used on dry green in order mm-hmm. for the pest not to attack them. Mm-hmm. You also use that one. You also scrub that one into the maize, mm-hmm. uh, on the maize, actually. And then uh, you leave it to cool. Mm-hmm. Then you packaging, which I said we'll talk about packaging uh, once we are back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's how we do it in our place. Then you store them. After packaging it well, you store them in your granary. Be sure that no pest will attack your grains. Wow, that's mm-hmm. amazing. It mm-hmm. reminds me of a certain way mm-hmm. or strategy that people cook in our area. Mm-hmm. Cook maize. Mm-hmm. Like by removing the upper layers, you know, there is always that maze that they used to make. I don't know, Mokimo or mm-hmm. what. Mm-hmm. By removing the layer, mm-hmm. the coat, mm-hmm. the layer coat on the upper side of the maze. So they take this ash, mm-hmm. when they put it in a sufuria, mm-hmm. they, uh, no, they put water in the sufuria. After the water uh, is, uh, the water starts boiling, they pour the maize inside the water. Mm-hmm. And then, and after the maize boil for some time, like not uh, for 10 to 30 minutes, mm-hmm. they pour the the ash mm-hmm. inside the maize. And then the maize, they started, they start, um, they start stirring mm-hmm. the maize and the ash together. And then the maize starts, turns yellow automatically. And then they, they continue doing like that, doing like that while cooking, while the fire is on. Mm-hmm. And then after that, they remove the maize and then they wash the maize. They wash the ash of the maize and then they take the maize uh, they cook the maize is always so sweet like i've eaten it several mm. times the maize is always so sweet <laughs> like I, I i i even wondered why is ash not that uh what ash is not poisonous huh? <laughs> because that is what we take when you have a uh, stomach ache ah. like in our place if you have stomach ache you you mix the ash and then you, you wait for it to settle down the clear liquid on the upper you drink it and then no, you, you want to teach us the traditional ways here. <laughs> yeah, you, you are becoming a herbalist. Anyway, uh, our main topic of today is still pest and disease control. First of uh, all, uh, let me cut it short. Uh, we haven't uh, finished the management. The other let's take, a, let's of take a cup of water before we finish <laughs> them because hey, yeah, we can't talk for the whole day. We mm-hmm. even get tired. Okay. Our main topic of, of the day is still pest and disease control. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to take a short commercial break. Ensure you still send us your comments, send us your feedbacks. You are still live on Facebook at a Farmers Media, on YouTube at a Farmers Media, on uh, Twitter at a Farmers with a Z underscore media, and on our website www.afarmersmedia.com. Let's take a short commercial break. We'll be back with more. Yeah, and don't forget to like, comment, and share. does not grow well in acidic soils. Depending on your soil test, you may need to add lime two months before planting. Now you need to select the best maize variety for your area. For dry areas, buy a variety that can grow with little water. Always use certified seed. This is disease-free and guaranteed to germinate. Consider planting other more drought-resistant crops like sorghum and millet in areas that are very dry. 
When preparing your land, it's a good idea to practice minimum tillage, which means you only dig holes or rip lines where you will plant the seed. Mark planting lines 90 centimeters apart from row to row and dig planting holes 30 centimeters apart from each other. The holes should be 15 centimeters deep. Put two handfuls of well-rotted manure in each hole and add one teaspoon of the recommended fertilizer. Mix well, then place one certified seed in each hole. Plant beans between your maize rows. Beans add nitrogen in your soil. You've planted maize and put in a lot of work to keep your soil healthy. Now, you need to manage it well so you get a good crop. Keep weeding as weeds take up food, water, space and light meant for your crop. Fertilizing your maize can really boost your yields. And the best way to know what fertilizer you need is by doing a soil test. Add fertilizer to your maize when you plant. Again, when your crop is knee high, top dress your maize with nitrogen rich fertilizers such as CAN or urea. For very high yields, it's worth top dressing again when the maize starts to flower or tassel. Investing in the right fertilizer and improving your soil health means investing in your profits. With the changing climate, we will see more pests and diseases, and as smart farmers know, when it comes to pests and diseases, prevention is better than cure. Some of the most common pests in maize are fall armyworm, stem borer, and striger weed. Do the following to reduce pests and diseases in your maize. Plant certified seeds. Keep your farm weed free. Protect your crop every season and scout for pests and diseases regularly and treat them as you see them. Common maize diseases are head smart, maize lethal necrosis disease, MLND, and leaf streak. All three are caused by viruses and have no chemical treatment. Signs of maize lethal necrotic disease or MLND include drying of leaves, rapid yellowing of leaves, no tasseling, unusual or no ears, and rotting cobs. If you notice an attack, uproot the affected plant and burn them away from the field. much for joining us again we are back this is mid-morning show and this is a farmers media where we connect and learn and grow we are glad that you're able to join us again at this point we are still live on facebook at a farmers media we are live on youtube at a farmers media on twitter at a farmers with a z underscore media and on our website www.afarmersmedia.com we are still connecting with you our main topic of today is still um, uh, pest and disease control specifically on maize this is the part two of mm -hmm. what we had uh, our first uh, segment our first show about uh, pest and disease control in maize uh, was on thursday was it the 27th? Yeah. The 27th of July on Thursday. So you can go back, watch it, and then you come connect. If at all you were not able to join us on the previous show. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we are back. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are back. Like we never left. Yes. Anyway, don't forget to comment, like, share, mm -hmm. and also send all your questions. Any concerns that you have, send through the our live um mm -hmm. We'll be able to answer you and yeah. welcome once more to our farmers media where we connect, learn and grow. Uh -huh. Back to the business of the day. Yes, uh, as today we have a very important website for you as mm -hmm. a farmer. Mm -hmm. Definitely as a farmer who likes content, either posting or viewing uh, agricultural content, you can visit Sprout website that is www.sprout.com. 
uh, opencontent.com to learn more. You can uh, post your content on the Sprout website so that other farmers get to learn from you. You can also view other farmers' posts from there so that you also get to learn from them. That is why we have the Sprout website. Yeah, and not only posting your content, you'll be able to learn more about this crowd. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to connect to income opportunities. This is where you'll be able to identify different uh, opportunities mm -hmm. that can fund your business or where you can be able to learn a lot about farming in general. Yes, and Sprout is a website, uh, it's a farmer's platform. Actually, it's a website that most farmers use. It's a farmer's platform where they can post their content, mm -hmm. uh, whether you are into these are uh, farming, crop farming, uh, livestock farming, not only to Siongelele to Shamba, we also have livestock farming. So Sprout is definitely there to help you. You are uh, uh, to help you learn a lot from other farmers. Uh, Sprout is also there and it allows you as a farmer to educate others through what you are doing. Uh, like today we are talking about pest and disease control. Uh, you can also get to learn about pests and diseases through the Sprout website. So it's a it's an open book for mm -hmm. farmers. It's yeah. an open book for farmers. I definitely uh, recommend the Sprout website. Yeah, if you have and anything we, concerning farming, mm -hmm. that is the way to go. Yeah, and we urge all the people viewing right now or listening right now. Be sure that you are going to learn a lot from Sprout website. Go to the Sprout website and uh, click on it and then look at what they do. You'll be able to learn a lot, something that you haven't learned in a long time. Mm -hmm. The website is still www.sproutopencontent.com. So yeah. ensure you get to that website. Come back and tell me if it has been of help to you because definitely I'm so sure it will be of help to you. Uh -huh. Before yeah. we went for a break, you had a burning point. Yeah. So you can explain to our viewers our burning point. Yeah. So in the previous segment, we were talking about management of weevils. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked about several other management practices. Mm -hmm. And another management that... Uh, we went to the break, unfortunately we went to the break before saying it, is hermetic uh, storage. Hermetic storage, this, this is the type of storage that creates an airtight oxygen depleted environment mm -hmm. that kills off the weevils and other pests. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions I would like to ask our viewers, uh, have you ever heard of a pest that can uh, survive without oxygen? Mm. Have, you ever, have you ever heard? Of a pest that can survive without oxygen? Mm, actually, I haven't heard, but that can be our question of the day. You can uh -huh. tell us in the comment section if you've, if you've ever had uh, a pest that can survive without oxygen. But all beings uh, depend on oxygen to live. Mm. I don't think there is something in this world that is alive that can uh, that can that can survive without oxygen, apart from machines and other things. Like the living things. I don't think there is any living thing, including plants, that can survive without oxygen. So that is where hermetic storage comes from, mm -hmm. whereby the, they use the airtight containers to store grains. So they store grains in these airtight containers where there is no amount of oxygen that is going through those kind of containers. Mm -hmm. So they prevent this uh, oxygen from entering to, into these containers. So... Through that, there is no formation of weevils that will be that will occur, mm -hmm. that will take place. Mm -hmm. So these uh, practice stop the oxygen and water from moving. Mm -hmm. It stops the movement of uh, oxygen and water. They can't get inside that container. Mm -hmm. So through that, your grains are very safe and uh, good for planting. Okay, that that point was definitely a burning one. I hope you've learned from. Uh, how you can manage your your weevils, mm -hmm. not even yours. They are not yours because they are just as stubborn <laughs> to you and they are disturbing you. You can manage yeah. weevils so that they don't get to attack your grain. So next, we will talk about uh, main spaces of growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you that is a good, a that. good, a good topic to mm -hmm. talk about. Mm -hmm. Anyway, in uh, maize growth, mm -hmm. there are different phases, many phases, like uh, several phases that are involved before the growing of maize or the planting of maize. One of the phases is vegetative phase. Mm -hmm. This is a um, vegetative phase of maize. Mm -hmm. This is where it starts from the movement of seed uh, planted and uh, last until the plant starts. Mm -hmm. So I'll repeat again. It starts from the movement, the moment, it starts from the moment the seed is planted and last until the plant starts, starts growing. Mm -hmm. 
So when you plant your seed, uh, vegetative uh, stage starts uh, start when the, the germination process occurs, mainly from the germination process occurs. Mm -hmm. So the germination process, there's always the planting of this maize seed uh, where it produces two things, that is the radical and the cleptide. So the radical goes into the soil. This is uh, that forms the roots now. The radical gets into the soils, uh, it forms the roots, it absorbs water, making the cleoptile. Now the two leaves, mm -hmm. they emerge from the soil. So the seeds, uh, through germination process, I know many of you know germination process, and if you don't know what germination process is, this is when uh, the seeds absorb water, mm -hmm. and then after absorbing this water, it swells, mm -hmm. and then bursts. And be when it bursts, it begins to germinate. Now the cleoptile emerges from the soil and the radical grows into the soil. So producing, uh, this is a, a seedling. A seedling, when you plant a seedling, germination process occurs. And then they are in this uh, vegetative, uh, vegetative phase, mm -hmm. there are other phases that are involved in this vegetative phase. Before you talk about the phases, you remember last week I was uh, telling you about how we soak maize? Mm -hmm. Yeah, soak yeah maize, I remember that. And then they swell. Mm -hmm. And then now we plant them after they are busted. I'm yeah. not sure if you are always doing I the think, right thing. I think that is also germination, another type of germination. So maize can germinate in water. Yeah, yeah, they can germinate in water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we do the right thing. At yeah. least I have confirmed. So, <laughs> yeah, so the cloture, it grows upward. Mm -hmm. The two now producing the two leaves. Mm -hmm. And then so, the in this vegetative phase, there are also other stages involved. One of the stages is V stages. These uh, V stages are determined by the number of the leaves on the plant. Mm -hmm. Now you can know which type of phase stage is this. Mm -hmm. The number of leaves, you count the, the number of leaves on that plant. Mm -hmm. So stages go from V1, that is one leaf, mm -hmm. to Vn, depending on the cone variety. You know, there are different types of cone variety. Yeah. And uh, they, they, they produce different kinds of leaves or they take germination. Uh, germin their germination is also different. At least yeah, I other, know the, the sweet yeah. corn. Yeah, so germination in plants can be yeah can be very di different. Mm -hmm. So there are other varieties that germinate very fast. They can even germinate overnight. There are other varieties that take a while before they germinate. Mm -hmm. So it also depends on the basis. The, these are stages of germination, and then there is growing condition usually not exceeding V eight V eight. So this V18. Mm -hmm. So when you grow your maize plant, when germination takes place, you ensure that uh, your plant is well watered so that it can germinate even faster. Mm -hmm. Through providing enough water for this plant, the, the seeds uh, absorb this water, swells, and then burst, producing your seedling. Mm -hmm. These seedlings, you can use these seedlings, you can sell to other farmers. Mm -hmm. Uh, these the farmers will be able to take these seedlings and then plant them instead of waiting for the seedling to emerge from the ground. Mm -hmm. So through that, yeah, through this vegetative phase, you'll be able to get a different kind of uh, product mm -hmm. that you can use for your farm. You can take these seedlings, you can decide to sell them, you can decide to continue growing them to become even more mature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that uh, you can just uh, grow the the seedlings and then you sell the seedlings of the maize? You can. Mm. Like you I'd can. like to know if the ones can survive in greenhouse. Yeah, can you they? can because I have seen that mm -hmm. there are people in our area who, who grow the seedlings and then mm -hmm. they take to neighboring chambers. Oh. Yeah, they grow them at home and then they take them to their chamber. Mm -hmm. You know, the soil in the chamber is more fertile than the one in the soil. Mm -hmm. And in the, one, uh, the, in the one at home, and at home, like there are, uh, uh, there are many things that can affect your maize plant when you plant them somewhere that are uh, that there is a lot of people. These people will be able to disturb this maize plant. For example, kids, they come and approve them yeah. and go and uh, play with those because they are curious. Things. Yeah, they are curious. What are these plants? <laughs> you see, others can come and uh, like they can even uh, like they destroy these plants for no reason. Mm -hmm. You see. Yeah, so it's always important to grow your plants where the, the soil are even more fertile. Okay, uh, the second stage after ve the vegetative uh, phase, we have a, a, a phase called tasseling. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about tasseling, uh, this stage marks the transition from the vegetative to the reproductive phase. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the tassel at the top of the plant, that is the pollen shed from the tassel begins, mm -hmm. uh, which is important for fertilization of the female flowers located on the on the on the cars on the I don't know if I don't know how I should put it. Case cars. Anyway, I hope you understand. Mm -hmm. So we understand. Yes, I hope you understand. The moment you are understanding, definitely the viewer is understanding. So tasseling is basically moving from the vegetative to the reproductive phase. Now mm -hmm. this is where we we are going to meet the the pollen the pollen shed the pollen grains. Mm -hmm. Yes, this stage you meet the pollen shed and the pollen grains, and this is where uh, the flowers start to come out in this stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's in, it helps in the fertilization process. Yes. Uh, bees, bees are, are like, uh, do I say messengers? Uh, I have Bees yes. are like pollinators. Yes, they are yes. exactly the, the right word. The pollinators mm -hmm. for, for, for fertilization or they, for, take, they take the pollen grains from one for plant. Pollination for pollination. For pollination. Okay. From one from one plant to another, mm -hmm. is any is pollination. Mm -hmm. ah, like they, pollination. they undergo cross pollination. Mm -hmm. This is whereby the insects move from one plant to another. Like when you they go to a male plant, they those take they the take the grain. pollen grains. The pollen grains stick onto them. They stick they, on into these bees and then the bees go to another flower, transmitting the female flower and the male flower. And then the product reproduction takes place. The pollination, pollination takes, takes place. place. <laughs> This term pollination, <laughs> my my tongue, mm. you may cut out your pollination. Yes, so basically that is uh, the phase called tussling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just basically moving from the vegetative phase to the reproductive phase. Mm -hmm. And in this phase, this is where we meet the female flowers uh, located on the ears, actually. Mm -hmm. the, the female flowers, they grow, they, they are located there on the ears. Yeah. And this is where pollination takes place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on this phase, mm. this is a crucial phase uh, because uh, through this phase, mm. the production, the reproduction process will take place. Mm. I don't know. The pollination process the will take pollination. place. The pollination. Eh. Yeah. Because these insects are like messengers. Mm. They take this pollen grain and transfer to another flower. Yeah, actually, they're just like messengers because yeah. when they get to the male, to the male flower, and then they take the pollen grains from there. Mm -hmm. They are being sent to take them to the female. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even under the, under the tasseling, uh, mm -hmm. we have a, a state called silking. Mm -hmm. uh, when I talk about silking, definitely you know silk in maize. Yeah. The the silk that is always on top. Like uh, the children call it like newel newel yeah. mahin. Kaba kaba. Yeah. When tussling is happening, the silk of the maize start to emerge from the ears. Mm -hmm. These silks capture the pollen grain, leading to pollination and fertilization, just like I have said before. Yeah. Yes. The moment it's on the silks, the mesha appear. They capture the pollen grains easily. So mm -hmm. even they, when the bees are moving, because you know bees love flowers, yes. when they are moving from the male plant to the female plant, and the silk uh, of the maize is already out, definitely they land. On that silk mm -hmm. and it will uh, pollination definitely will occur mm -hmm. and fertilization at the end of the day will occur also yeah mm -hmm. and uh, have you ever known that there are different types maize has a female and a male flower i don't even know how like the maize has a, a female and a male you know a male produces certain grains mm. a male produces uh, certain grains it doesn't produce the i don't it doesn't produce the maize plant mostly male the, male uh, Maize plant doesn't produce uh, maize plant. You the, can find the that cops. there is, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I realized that, uh, I don't know if it is actually like that, but I realized that on my, our maize field. Mm -hmm. I saw that uh, there are other plants that have grown very tall but doesn't have maize plants. The they cops, haven't produced the maize crops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was like, what is really happening? Why is this very tall? doesn't produce anything. Just, just that flower. The flower that is, I don't know, it is. The silky one. Yeah. No, not the silky one. The silky one is on the, on the maize, maize cobs, cob, yeah. yeah. Now the, the plants have those. The oh, upper, I know the, the upper one. That, on the tip. I know the, yeah. I know the flower that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. 
So that is a male, so, a male Yeah, male and I, I asked my father, why is this not producing this? And my, my father was, it is a male plant. I don't know if he, he was joking or it was true. But at least now you know it's true. Yeah. But I, again, I I thought, uh-huh. I've just thought right now, that a, a male plant doesn't reproduce just like that without a female plant. Mm-hmm. Of course, if there is a male plant, then there is a female plant. Yeah. Just like humans, mm. a female cannot produce uh, like can't give produce. birth to a baby without uh, a, male, a male. Yeah, yeah. may it be like donation of uh, sperms or donation of but what? definitely a male was involved. Yes, a male yes. was involved. Anyway, to another stage that is that takes us to a reproductive phase. This is the grain filling phase. Mm-hmm. This is where now the the maize is being produced. The the cobs. They are called what? The, the kernels. <laughs> the kernels are being produced. Uh-huh. So this is when the plant focuses on its energy. This energy by filling the grain. Mm-hmm. They focus on the energy of uh, filling the grain. Mm-hmm. They produce that energy to be able to fill these grains. Mm-hmm. So uh, they, there are different stages again involved in the reproduction stages. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you can just eat maize where, however you want, but you... You have also to learn how these things are produced. Mm-hmm. So there are different uh, processes involved in producing uh, these kernels. So through reproductive phase, uh, they, there is blister and milk stage. Mm-hmm. This is where the fertilized ovules uh, develop into kernels. Mm-hmm. In the blister stage, the kernels are small, white, and filled with clear fluid. Mm-hmm. So in this stage, uh, the kernels are they have the clear fluid. The the clear or the milk? The clear fluid. The clear they have the mm-hmm. they have the fertilizer that is in blister stage. Oh. Blister stage. You, know, you can see that if you have a bil- a blister and then you persuade it, you see that there is a clear liquid. Mm-hmm. So that happens also in maize. Mm-hmm. In the blister stage they produce a clear liquid. Mm-hmm. And then this clear liquid and then turns into a milky mm-hmm. in the milky stage. Mm-hmm. So when the in the milky stage the kernels enlarge and a clear fluid turns into milky white. Now this is after the blister, mm-hmm. the blister stage. Mm-hmm. So you can just think it as the how you get a blister. It is always colorless. But now in maize it turns in a certain uh, certain stage it turns into milky. Mm-hmm. So when it turns into milky white, uh, then we go to the dark and dense stages. This is where now the the inner milky thing fluid start to thicken to a darkly consistency. That is now when you open that maze, you find that there is something white, thick white. Mm-hmm. You you can also remove the maze uh, coat. By removing the maze coat, you'll be able to see the white thing. That is now in the dark and dense stage. The kernels mature fully and then and a small dent forms at the top of each mm-hmm. kernel as it uh, dries. Mm-hmm. That is when you pluck the maize, you see that there is a certain dent. Kuna kwanga naika dent. Weren't you curious that why does the, the maize have that dent? This is the dove and the dent stages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we, is it that, uh, okay, do we use the dent to make oil or what? Wait, what are you talking? Wait, what do you mean when you talk about dent? Dent and dove, uh, dent stages. Mm-hmm. You see now the popcorn you eat, enjoying it, or the. Let's say just the maize. Mm. When you buy your, your, your maize that has been, you know, maindi choma, maindi choma mm. or the maindi chomusha, when you buy that kind of maize, uh, you find that before even it is cooked, it is always right, white, right? Mm-hmm. And then when you try to press that maize, it produces a maziwa maziwa. So you see? Oh, okay. Yeah. So that is what we use when you want to make oil. Yeah. Now that is, no, no. Not that one. Mm-hmm. Now we. Are, I don't know how they make oil, but I'm trying. Definitely, to... there's this. Uh, I am trying to understand. There's mm-hmm. this. Uh, a small part of maize that's mm-hmm. always on the tip of the of the kernel. Mm-hmm. Of when you take a single kernel and uh, uh, you look at the tip, mm-hmm. you always find this small thing. When you're eating boiled maize, definitely you have to meet that thing. It's kinda yellow, somehow. Yellow. Oh yeah, I know that one. Yes, that, that is, is what, what we use used to. Oh yeah, now I remember. That's yeah. what they used to make. Have you ever eaten maize that uh, already have the milky that is in the blister stage? The milk. Yeah. yeah, I've eaten that, but you can't, uh, you can't 
do it as a mind choma because it's always not good when I've, you I've eaten it when uh, on the mind like in the milky one. stage like yes. when you press it like this produces milk yes. no, for me i haven't it, eaten that when eating it now is when you feel the milk but i haven't the choma you are good i haven't eaten that as the as the mind choma i've all, i've only eaten that uh when boiled because if you even try to pluck the kernels from the cob they burst like they produce that milk so it is very impossible in the milky stage to harvest this kind of maize because they produce that milk thing mm. so it is very hard for you to even pluck those and then go and uh, boil them so you just have to boil them in the, with the cob like that and then you eat with the co- when they are attached to the cob So in that and then stages they mainly occur when the maize is about to dry. Mm. That is now when they form that uh, that kanini ka, ka, ka thick. They form that thick substance that is always inside the maize. That is yeah. that enables you uh, to remove even the coat on the maize and eat that thing Don't because of the dough and then stages. Okay. Yeah. Uh, our next phase is harvesting. When mm-hmm. I talk about harvesting, definitely I believe that everybody understands harvesting. Mm-hmm. Harvesting usually happens uh, when the kernels have reached about 15 to 30 percent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want us to be so clear with these figures. Mm-hmm. Yes, you have to master them, understand these figures. Uh, it usually happens when the kernels have reached about 15 to 30 percent, moisture which allows for optimal storage. Uh, I already explained what kernels are, the seeds. the products that are uh, we remove from the cob mm-hmm. those seeds those mm-hmm. seeds are called kernels we've given you a new name today mm-hmm. they have said grains should be dried about 13 to 15% moisture mm-hmm. for storage to prevent mold growth mm-hmm. just like i was talking about mold growth before the moment you don't dry your maize after harvesting definitely you have to dry your maize if you don't if you want to avoid things like uh, pests from getting into your maize mm-hmm. to your maize grains you have to dry them properly that is after harvesting mm-hmm. i see some people harvesting green mm-hmm. and some harvest the maize when they are really dried up mm-hmm. yes okay. so even if you harvest a uh, maize when it's really dry ensure that uh, after removing the kernels from the maize cob ensure that you dry them you dry the kernels separately mm-hmm. after removing the the maize the kernels from the maize cob mm-hmm. uh, definitely uh, when you've already removed the kernels from the maize cob the cob now has its different purpose some people use yeah. it as fuel yeah they use it as fuel you can put it if they are dry enough mm-hmm. you can take it and uh, put it on your jiko mm-hmm. and then you just you just make it uh, make it fuel in you can it, it can be it, it you can use it as your as your fuel yeah. but now let's talk about the kernels mm-hmm. you have to dry your kernels of your grains uh, after you remove them from the maize cob ensure they are fully dry mm-hmm. before storing them yeah yeah uh, to prevent molds from a uh, getting into your grains yeah. uh like same we talked about aflatoxins so the yeah. moment your maize have molds and you just store them like that because you didn't dry them properly uh aflatoxins come in at that point yes and they are very dangerous and affected mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh during harvesting it's a crucial stage this is where uh it determines what you are going to sell what is going to you are going to determine the losses the profits and etc etc but if you had a careful planning on your harvest on everything on your farm then you'll be able to get a profit mm-hmm. so harvesting of maize uh, you should also consider that uh, these uh, cobs mm-hmm. after you you remove the maize they have different purposes even when they are wet when they are wet it is it's even good when they are wet because you can feed them to your cows cows eat those cobs when they are wet but they also eat them dry yes yes their cows oh, that... they are able to eat them dry yes uh when you just chop them mm-hmm. finely just uh, you treat a cow as if you are treating your own child uh-huh. or as if okay. you are treating yourself when you just chop them well mm-hmm. and then you give it to the cows they eat Wow. Okay. Have you have you ever seen you've never seen uh someone just harvesting the maize and then leaving the the stems the maize the maize stalk mm-hmm. uh in the shamba and then they just 
release their cows to go in. Yeah, eat. I've seen that. I've seen that. They do that all the time in our area. Yeah. So uh, the best way to give those cows uh, these uh, products or these feeds, you just chop them mm-hmm. nicely and then you give it to them. They can eat it, right? Mm-hmm. And they can eat it in green. Wow, that is they, nice. It's just that they can't tell us which one is now more sweet. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. So the other one is, uh, after all these stages, do you have any other stage in the maize phase? Uh, no, basically those are the maize phases of growth mm-hmm. uh, that we have for you today. Mm-hmm. I hope you are getting to learn a lot from them. We are still live on YouTube at A Farmers Media, on Facebook at A Farmers Media, on Twitter at A Farmers with a Z underscore media, and on our website www.afarmersmedia.com. Mary Oswero is still my name. I'm still your host. And our main topic mm-hmm. of the day is still pest uh-huh. and disease control. Yes. So we are still here. Continue sending your questions, your comments. Give us your feedbacks. We'll mm-hmm. be reading all of them as yeah. we continue. Mm-hmm. I say this is a farmer's media where we connect, learn, and, and grow. grow. And we are here to connect with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are here to learn from you as you learn from us. And definitely from the learning, we'll grow in different ways. Yes. So as we continue, um, our next uh, subtopic is handling pests in the cycle of maize. Yeah. What we do you know? We already talked about pests. Mm-hmm. We already talked about the types of pests. Mm-hmm. We already talked about how they they harm or how they attack mm-hmm. the maize plants. Yeah. And now we want to know how to handle them in the cycle of maize. Okay. Uh, you can tell us uh, what our viewers are telling us in the comment section. Okay. Uh, we have High Self. He's saying that she's saying that. Following from Kajiado, Kenya, deep up the good content. Thank you so much, Steph. And then she has a question. Uh, I don't know. It's a question or a comment. Climate conditions can influence pest and disease prevalence in maize too. Mm-hmm. So understanding the local climate patterns can help anticipate potential outbreaks and plan appropriate management strategies. Maybe you can read that again. Okay. Let me read it in a more slowly <laughs> pace. Okay. Mm-hmm. Climate conditions mm-hmm. can influence pest and disease prevalence in maize too. Mm-hmm. Wow, okay. And then, so understanding the local climate patterns can help and anticipate potential outbreaks and plan appropriate management strategies. Wow. Thank you for educating us, Stephanie. That's a good one, Stephanie. Uh, you can get the comment on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to learn more, Stephanie or Stephanie. Sharon Okayo mm-hmm. has educated us and has enlightened us on that point. Yes. So you can get, if, if you didn't get to hear it from us well, Stephanie has explained it on the comment section. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much, Stephanie, for the comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you continue, uh, let's move to handling pests in the life of maize. Yeah, how do we handle these pests? Mm-hmm. Yeah, tell us, like, uh, in the comment section, as uh, in the comments section, if you have any other ways, apart from the one we are going to mention, yeah. of handling these pests and diseases. So first of all, uh, we are talking about pre-planting. Definitely when you want to plant any crops, mm-hmm. any any type of crop, uh, just like maize, mm-hmm. you have to go through these stages. So mm-hmm. first of all, we are talking about pre-planting, how to mm-hmm. handle pests and diseases in the life cycle of maize. So... First of all, let's talk about pest management during pre-planting. Mm-hmm. Before planting, I take into consideration uh, pests like corn root worms. So we mm-hmm. talked about corn root worms, the ones that attack the roots. And the moment they attack the roots, definitely your roots will, will be the roots of the maize will be so weak. Yes. That even if they are blown away by the wind, they'll just fall down. Yeah. And make you, uh, uh, as a farmer, have lose a lot. Yes. Uh, so uh, we have to begin on corn rootworms and wireworms uh, that might live in the soil. Mm-hmm. So corn rootworms and wire and wireworms. They wow. live. Do they have wires? Wireworms. <laughs> 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 These pets, they have names. Mm-hmm. They have names. They have nice, nice names. <laughs> they have nice, nice names, but they are doing terrible things to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so corn rootworms and wireworms, they live. In the soil. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about uh, pest management in pre-planting, they're talking about uh, the worms or the pests that are already in the soil. Mm-hmm. Yes, because in that soil, that's where you plant your maize. Mm-hmm. So in order for you to manage such kind of pests, uh, 
you can treat your seed. So seed treatment with insecticides can help control this pest. Use product approved for use in your area. Mm -hmm. Uh, just like we were saying, you have to go to, to the agrovet or to an expert. Maybe just go to an agrovet yeah. because there are experts or specialists there who can tell you uh, what type of insecticides to use in your farm in mm -hmm. order for you uh, to even kill the pests because the best way is just killing them. Yeah, even and make sure you have done enough research on these kind of uh, pesticides you are going to buy. Yeah, ask them, let them give you instructions, tell you this is the best insecticide to use on your mm -hmm. soil before planting your maize. Yeah. Don't just use uh, your brains and tell yourself, ah, I'm the one who knows these things. Even yeah. if you have been a farmer for 15, 16, 20 years, Definitely you need some advice. Yeah, you need advice and enough research and also more advice from experts. Yeah, you have to visit an expert. Uh, maybe maybe whatever you, you used to know, like 10 years ago, something has changed. That's why we are advising uh, on the pre-planting stage when you're talking about pests that are mostly in the soil. Mm -hmm. Before planting, definitely you have to visit an agrovet uh, an agrovet or an expert should tell you uh, more about the insecticide that you can use on your soil yes. before planting. Yeah. And you also have the disease management on pre-planting. Mm -hmm. At this stage, it's important to choose maize varieties that are resistant to prevalent diseases in your region. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different types of there are variety. When it comes to maize, we have variety. Mm -hmm. So before uh, before you choose any type of maize grain or seedling that you want to have on your farm, mm -hmm. uh, you have to know hmm, which type of maize is resistant uh, to prevalent diseases in your region. Like yes. right now we are in Kajado. If you're mm -hmm. a farmer in Kajado, mm -hmm. you have to know which type of maize can I plant in my farm in order for diseases not to attack it. Which type of maize grain is the best mm -hmm. for my farm or which type of, of maize is the best for Kajiado mm -hmm. region, you'll find that uh, uh, the maize that you'll plant in Kajiado mm -hmm. maybe may not do well mm -hmm. in Kitale. Yeah. Yeah. So in order for you to have uh, the right variety, an expert also has to come in here and mm -hmm. help you and uh, tell you, maybe inform you or advise you on which type of seedling or seeds to plant on your farm in order for diseases not to attack mm -hmm. your maize. Yeah, so be careful on choosing uh, the type of uh, the type of a person to advise you on what you should do with your farm. Don't even choose the type of a person. Go to an expert. Yeah, the type of person, that, that is by, by the type of the person, mm -hmm. I mean the expert, okay. the agrovet. You just... Don't go and say, my friend say that uh, she applied, I don't know what, in her farm and it was good. Yeah, it, it is good to take recommendation also. But after you get that recommendation, go to that particular person who sold, like who gave that uh, that particular agrovet, which uh, your friend bought that pesticide from. Ask about it and ask if it is good, if it can be good for your farm. Yeah, so always consult. And then that takes us to another uh, another, another point, that is planting. The, in planting, you should consider proper spacing and seed depth. You know, a lot of farmers go wrong here. Sometimes you tend to plant your seeds too deep into the soil or too shallow into the soil. Both sides have effects. Mm -hmm. If you plant your seed too deep into the soil, then they will take a lot of time to germinate. Before, mm -hmm. for they will take a very very long time, and you don't want to harvest your your maize very late mm -hmm. when others have already harvested. You've waited, you've waited. <laughs> You're harvesting when people have already sold. Yeah, that is that is not good even for yourself. Mm -hmm. You want to be on the season. Your maize to be on the season, mm -hmm. so don't plant them too deep. And then again, if you plant them too shallow, then your seeds will be able to get affected by insects very easily. The roots, mm. like the cutworms, they cut the, the seeds, uh, stems, or the, the rootworms. They, mm. they eat the roots very easily, and then the, your plant will go to waste. Mm. And then the, the recommendation, what should we do to prevent uh, these kind of things? Mm. So planting seeds at the recommended depth. Be sure that this is the depth I want. This is the depth I've researched about. This is the depth that my seeds will be able to grow well without any bad things. And then, too shallow planting can expose seedlings to fungal diseases 
as I've just said, uh, your plant will be will get these kind of fungal diseases if you plant them too shallow. Mm -hmm. And then too deep planting can lead to problems with seedling emergence. Mm -hmm. As I said again, it, is, it will take too long to emerge. Mm -hmm. The cleoptile will be able to penetrate the ground uh, very slowly because it is looking for ways to go up to ensure that the plant is growing upwards. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, okay, on that point, uh, if you don't want to be embarrassed, as yeah. a farmer, when you planted your maize, make sure you plant them in the right depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you don't want to you don't want to be harvesting when people have already sold their maize. Now, where where will you take your maize? Mm -hmm. You'll just be staying with your maize in your granary and encouraging pests to attack them. Yeah. While you should be planting, you, sh you should be harvesting to sell. Mm -hmm. As a farmer, if if you are doing uh if you are having uh, many acres of land or uh, you're just planting to sell, ensure you just, you don't plant her first, and then you keep them until now and sell them later. Yeah. Uza raka raka. Yeah, because if you, if you say, I'll sell them later, maybe in that particular time, there are other people who have already bought many other stocks of that maize. So they were waiting for that, and then you are the only one selling them. Or maybe your maize will even get expired. They, they will they, spoil. Yeah, they will spoil because they have stayed in a, such a long time. Okay, on to our next point, uh, growing season. You have this state of growing season. Mm -hmm. So in the growing season, uh, this is, uh, during this season, we have also uh, ways of managing our pests and diseases. Mm -hmm. When I talk about uh, growing seasons in this stage, uh, there's regular monitoring and intervention. Mm -hmm. Definitely when you're growing, you have to be so, so keen uh, when it comes to uh, handling your pests and diseases. Mm -hmm. So you have to be monitoring regularly mm -hmm. and also intervening on uh, parts where necessary. Yeah. Uh, when I talk about pest management during the growing season, uh, regularly monitor your crop for signs of pest infestation. Don't just relax and say that, ah, I've already planted now that I've grown my, I've, I've already planted my maize, mm -hmm. let me just allow it to grow. Mungu atasaidia. Mungu atasaidia wanao jisaidia. So, yes. you have to monitor your crops for signs of pest infestations. This helps you detect the worms mm -hmm. early and you can easily spray the insecticides on time. The mm -hmm. moment you detect uh, the, the pest early enough, it's easier to handle them. But the moment you just sit there and tell yourself, I've already planted my maize, now let me relax and wait for God to do one act. God cannot help you if you are not helping yourself. First, you just come, invade your farm, you just be there. When you when you get to the farm, you see the wonders you've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. The pests have already, <laughs> have already attacked your farm and now your maize are gone. So ensure as a farmer, you monitor. If you have a, if you have a large... Okay, don't say big farms. If you have big farms, mm -hmm. uh, like just like you're talking about drones, mm -hmm. you can uh, you can get to know the kind of pests that are already in your farm through yeah. drones. Mm -hmm. The drones really help. Just like, yeah, they help a lot. Yeah, you mentioned before, and then on the disease management, monitor monitor for diseases symptoms like leaf spots, mm -hmm. wilting, apply appropriate fungicides for the disease for the disease detected. Mm -hmm. When you look at your maze, uh. That have been affected by diseases, definitely you'll see spots. Yes. Uh there, there are even maize that are the leaves type yellow. Yeah, the yellowish leaves in yeah. maize can can is also a common problem. Mm -hmm. So those are diseases that attack that attack your maize. So ensure you're also keen on uh you're also keen on monitoring and uh, definitely you'll spot if there's a disease like spots, like mm -hmm. uh, leaf spots and wilting, mm -hmm. you can get to know what type of fungicides that you can apply on your maize early enough so mm -hmm. that the disease is treated, the disease disappears immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So before we continue, I feel we need to take a cup of water. Yeah. But don't go away. You're still here. We'll be back after a short break. And don't forget to follow us on social media at a farmers media in Facebook, at a farmers media in YouTube, at www.farmers.com in our website. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. Maize does not grow well in acidic soils. Depending on your soil test, you may need to add lime two months before planting. Now you need to select the best maize variety for your area. For dry areas, 
Buy a variety that can grow with little water. Always use certified seed. This is disease free and guaranteed to germinate. Consider planting other more drought resistant crops like sorghum and millet in areas that are very dry. When preparing your land, it's a good idea to practice minimum tillage, which means you only dig holes or rip lines where you will plant the seed. Mark planting lines 90 centimeters apart from row to row and dig planting holes 30 centimeters apart from each other. The holes should be 15 centimeters deep. Put two handfuls of well rotted manure in each hole and add one teaspoon of the recommended fertilizer. Mix well, then place one certified seed in each hole. Plant beans between your maize rows. Beans add nitrogen in your soil. You've planted maize and put in a lot of work to keep your soil healthy. Now, you need to manage it well so you get a good crop. Keep weeding as weeds take up food, water, space and light meant for your crop. Fertilizing your maize can really boost your yields. And the best way to know what fertilizer you need is by doing a soil test. Add fertilizer to your maize when you plant. Again, when your crop is knee high, top dress your maize with nitrogen rich fertilizers such as CAN or urea. For very high yields, it's worth top dressing again when the maize starts to flower or tassel. Investing in the right fertilizer and improving your soil health means investing in your profits. With the changing climate, we will see more pests and diseases, and as smart farmers know, when it comes to pests and diseases, prevention is better than cure. Some of the most common pests in maize are fall armyworm, stem borer, and striger weed. Do the following to reduce pests and diseases in your maize. Plant certified seeds. Keep your farm weed free. Protect your crop every season and scout for pests and diseases regularly and treat them as you see them. Common maize diseases are head smart, maize lethal necrosis disease, MLND, and leaf streak. All three are caused by viruses and have no chemical treatment. Signs of maize lethal necrotic disease or MLND include drying of leaves, rapid yellowing of leaves, no tasseling, unusual or no ears, and rotting cobs. If you notice an attack, uproot the affected plant and burn them away from the field. It takes both time and money to get a good maize crop. So, don't let all your hard work go to waste. And be sure to harvest and store it properly. It is best to harvest your maize when leaves and husks are dry and the cob is drooping. Once you have harvested, dry the maize on the cob for two to three weeks in the sun on a tarpaulin. Next, use a hand sheller or a machine sheller to remove the maize from its cob. Before storing, you'll need to dry the maize once more. Well-dried maize will store longer and is less likely to mold or rot, and therefore produce a flatoxin. If you store your maize in a size of sack, you'll need to treat your maize first with a pesticide which can be harmful to your health. Make sure not to eat the maize for six months after treating. Or a better option is to store it in a hermetic bag such as pigs, where you won't need to treat your maize because the bags are airtight and kill insects and pests. It is best to store your bags on a pallet at least four to six inches off the floor away from the wall. This will allow air to flow and stop the bags from getting moisture from the floor.
Welcome back to our mid-morning show. This is a farmer's media where we connect, learn, and grow. My name is Mary Oswero. And I am Regina Ayanai. Yes, yeah, so before we went for a break, we were talking about uh, handling pests in the life cycle of maize. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, we had uh, different points, but uh, we had to take some cup of water before you came back. We kuongea for that long without taking a break. It's also so hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can follow us on our social media platforms. We are live on Facebook at a Farmers Media. We are live on YouTube at a Farmers Media on our website www.afarmersmedia.com and also on Twitter at a Farmers with a Z underscore media. Continue uh, sending us your feedbacks, your comments. We are here to read all of them. You can also educate us on the points that you feel we didn't mention uh, so that our farmers also get to learn more from you. Just like I said before, you are learning from us Mm -hmm. as we are learning from you. Mm -hmm. Once again, welcome to our farmers media where we connect, learn and grow. Anyway, we are continuing from the growing stage to harvesting. After growing your plants, of course, they are now ready, ready for harvest. Mm -hmm. Now in harvesting, we are supposed to harvest on timely basis. So timely harvest and proper handling of of pest management during this harvesting Mm -hmm. is also a crucial phase Mm -hmm. whereby we'll be able to determine what kind of produce, what quantity or quality of produce you are going to harvest. Mm -hmm. So during harvesting, it should be done as soon as the maize is mature to reduce pest damage. Mm -hmm. So as soon as your maize is mature enough, you have seen that this maize is good, it's mature now. Harvest it immediately Mm -hmm. because some pests such as corn uh, earworms continue to feed on these uh, crops until harvest. Mm -hmm. So if you continue leaving your crops in the field and they are already mature, these corn earworms will be able to continue feeding on them. They feed on them bit by bit, bit by bit by bit until they finish the whole of your farm. Mm -hmm. We see that pole pole ya kobe mufikisha mbali. You see, when they eat slowly, they eat just slowly, you see there is no difference. But when time passes, you'll realize that you have lost a lot. Mm -hmm. So it ensures also, it reduces those pests that that have to cause damage. When you harvest them on timely basis, uh, on time, Mm -hmm. you'll be able, these pests will reduce automatically because you have removed uh, your maize from the field. Mm -hmm. So they'll be able to die because of lack of what they feed on mm-hmm. and then ensure harvested corn is properly cleaned to remove any pest just like you said mm-hmm. you ensure that it is properly cleaned because when you are not cleaning this corn maybe there are other diseases that are attached to it they are these diseases are spreading widely mm-hmm. when you put these uh infected corns with the others that have not been uh, clean mm-hmm. they will automatically damage the others the disease will spread, making all your maize to turn yellow or brown. You see, the bitter maize, the ones that you usually find in the gideri sometimes, mm. if you don't uh, if you don't take your gideri, we know your gideri well. Actually, when you talk about cleaning, I think uh, mm-hmm. this is what uh, I understand mm-hmm. uh, from my perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you have maize, uh, when you have kuchagua, you have yes. to... How do, how, do we, how do we say it in English? Just say selecting Chagua. the maize. Selecting, selecting ah. the bad and the good maize. Yes, you, remove, you separate them. Actually, you separate. You separate mm-hmm. the bad ones from the good ones. Because definitely, uh, when you have the good and the bad maize together, when you have uh, the good fruits and you add an, another bad one, it will affect the good ones. So yeah. if you want your maize to be good and clean, you have to separate the bad ones from the good ones. Yeah, and apart from separating also those, if certain plants uh, show disease symptoms, try to harvest them on time. Mm-hmm. Uh, trust, no, not on time, like you try to harvest them last. Mm-hmm. Because uh, if you try to harvest them fast, they will be able to infect your cleaning equipment. So when you go to harvest the other ones that are already ripe, you'll find that uh, they are also infected because you, you tried harvesting the deceased one first. So always ensure that you try harvesting them last mm-hmm. so that the, you harvest first the, the ones that are healthy. Mm-hmm. And then clean your equipment, your harvesting equipment before doing anything else. Mm-hmm. If you harvest your crops today and then you are going to the field tomorrow again to harvest, make sure you clean this equipment before taking it back to the field. And then after harvesting disease plants, uh, to prevent the spreading of disease to healthy plants, you should also ensure that uh, 
you get rid of the severely attacked plants. Mm-hmm. Like plant the plants that you can find that all the maize, like almost all the kernels have been eaten by the pest. Mm-hmm. Remove that kernel and throw it away. Remove that cob and throw it away and also get rid of that plant. If, because the more you keep it in your field, the more it will spread these kind of diseases. Mm-hmm. There are other diseases that are very... Uh, there are other pests that are very light. They When the wind blows, mm-hmm. they are uh, supplied to other plants. Mm-hmm. It blows them to another plant. And also the, flower we- the flying weevils we are talking about. Mm-hmm. So during harvesting, Ensure that it is timely harvest and a proper handling of pest management. Okay. Mm-hmm. After harvesting, we have post harvest, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. Uh, so when you talk about post harvest, mm-hmm. uh, you're talking about storage and packaging. But now, storage and packaging will expound more as we continue. Mm-hmm. So during post harvest, uh, this is how you manage your pest. Ensure that the area is clean and mm-hmm. free from pests. Mm-hmm. First of all, just ensure. They always say prevention is better than cure, but the moment it's there, mm-hmm. ensure that the area is clean and free from pests. Uh, using hermetic storage bags can help protect the harvest from the pests. You already talked about uh, hermetic storage mm-hmm. bags. Yeah. These are the, the tight bags. They don't yeah. allow... Uh, oxygen or oxygen, water movement. Yes, oxygen or water movement. So ensure that the area is clean mm-hmm. and free from pest. And you also use hermetic bags. Yes. Uh, for those who don't know hermetic bags, uh, we have uh, bags that are... Uh, we have the poly... They look like the polythene. Mm-hmm. The polythene bags. But yes. now they are big for storing maize. They, yeah. they are somehow big for storing maize. So when you are storing your grains inside the hermetic bags, ensure that uh, it, there is no air circulating inside after you play, you've already put your maize inside. Yeah, ensure it's airtight. Yes. There is no air going inside. Mm. Yeah, ensure it's airtight. So that's how uh, we can uh, uh, definitely manage our pests yeah. uh, during the the post harvest yeah yeah and you know after harvesting there are other processes that are involved after harvesting that include the packaging of the maize mm-hmm. now after you harvest your maize you need to package them mm-hmm. uh so you ensure that your maize is dried uh, and processed so after it's process it is processed it needs to be stored and packaged in a way that prevents uh spoilage and safe transport mm-hmm. that is w- what it takes us to bulk and store bulk storage and transport mm-hmm. So maize for animal feed is often stored in bulk. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it can be in grain silos, large bags or bins. Mm -hmm. So when you package them for uh, for transport purposes, it may be loaded into grains, uh, hoppers or on trucks or trains. So during your packaging them, your package, make sure that your package is is in a, it is uh, sealed in a way that there is no other insect that is going to, to ruin it, or in a way that when it is being transported, uh, you, you know, when the bags are usually transported, the bags of maize, mm-hmm. they are bouncing. Like, yes. There are these bumps on the roads, mm-hmm. on the, the tarmac roads. Mm-hmm. So make sure that it is safe, because when they are bouncing like that, they can tow, like they, 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 can, they, tear. They, yeah, they can tear. Mm-hmm. They can tear and uh, you, you will lose a lot of produce. Mm-hmm. So make sure that during uh, bulk storage and transport, make sure that you store them in a good environment where th- that is free from weevils, free from other pests. And the transport should be also considered well. Yes, actually I've seen these lorries that transport maize, maybe mm-hmm. from Italy to our areas, because mm-hmm. in our areas you don't have uh, so much maize. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I actually, I don't, I'm not sure if they know how they should... Uh, be transporting the maize mm-hmm. because in most cases you realize that uh, by the time they get to our markets, mm-hmm. the the gunias, the sacks already yes. have tires. Yeah. And now I'm not sure if they always get profit because uh, the moment uh, they they have tires, some maize grains definitely are down. Yeah, not even maize grains. Even the people inside that car can be able to to steal your produce because there is that small hole they'll be able to remove those things and you won't even notice just say it's just a hole but that hole they'll take a lot of produce i've seen some people doing that Mm. like uh, when the things are being transported Mm -hmm. there are always those people who want to get into those kind of lorries the ones who want lifts 
So they get into those kinds of of uh, of lorries mm-hmm. where the food is preserved. So when they get there and they see that they there are a lot of maize sack inside there, mm-hmm. and they see one of them has a hole. Of course, they will try to steal it. Yeah. They'll they they'll continue borrowing into that hole, making the maize uh even uh poor. More Actually, on the on the stealing part, mostly I've seen it also when when uh, lorries are trans- transporting sugar cane. Yeah. <laughs> we just see people running after that lorry and they're busy taking sugar canes from that lorry as yeah. it's there. And the pineapples also. I saw that viral <laughs> video of a man in Nairobi uh-huh. who was stealing the pineapples in their car. They were being transported and their pineapples were piled up mm-hmm. on the top of the lorry. Mm-hmm. So the man was uh, had a gunia and he was hanging he had that sack. Mm-hmm. Then he was hanging on the lorry, taking the picking the Pineapples. The pineapples from the road and putting them on the sack. And then he, he placed some um, several pineapples and then alighted from that car. The lorry didn't even notice. Because they did an improper transport. Make sure that you cover your, your lorry, the lorry that you are using to transport your goods. Mm-hmm. Cover them with the, that, uh, they usually put that, I don't know, it's nylon or what, tent. I don't know. Yeah, the tent. The they tent. put the tent on, on the lorry. So make sure that it is well packaged during transportation so that you will not lose your produce. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let's talk about consumer packaging. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the maize is destined for direct consume, consume, mm-hmm. consumer, use such a, uh, okay. If the maize is destined for direct consumer use, such as popcorn, definitely when you're pla- when you're planting popcorn, mm-hmm. uh, most people plant pop- popcorn to eat. Yes, <laughs> and not... others are doing it for commercial purposes. Mm-hmm. Okay, but the ones I know mm-hmm. just plant to eat. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's also a good product that can bring you good money. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it should be packaged in a way that uh, that's suitable for retail sale. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're planting a uh, your maize or your mm-hmm. corn, just for consumer purposes, mm-hmm. definitely it will reach a point that maybe uh, you'll want to sell it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> How if you go and are Indian, then you don't have kids. Yeah. You have to sell something in order for you to get something. Yeah, yeah. Of course, in the past, they get the exchange of exchange. goods and services. But nowadays, you have to sell for you to get money and then you buy something else. Mm-hmm. So, even when you're, when you're planting for consumer you when you're harvesting for consumer purposes mm-hmm. just pack it yeah. as if you'll be selling it because you never know maybe yeah. uh, in future you might want to sell but yeah. now in most cases this often involves smaller packaging like uh, plastic bags or paper bags mm-hmm. uh, we advise uh, farmers who harvest for consumer purposes mm-hmm. uh, you just package it well so that uh, you also avoid First, attacking your grains. Mm-hmm. Yes. And also, packaging could include the branding and nutritional information and mm-hmm. should be designed to keep the product fresh until it's used. Mm-hmm. When you visit these supermarkets, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever realized that something has been written expiry date is after five years. Yes. And it's I've made. Seen that, that kind of a thing. Do you think those people are always telling us the truth? I don't really know because I've never proved, so I won't say anything about that. Because how can how can I go to the supermarket and uh, get a product and they're telling me it was manufactured last year and it will expire after five years? Anyway, maybe 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 they have put some preservatives hmm. that are able to preserve the food with that kind of uh, with that kind of a time. Okay. But uh, but maybe I can believe that because uh, we preserve meats for over a year. Meat? Yes, meat. How do you do it? They dry it. They dry the meat? Yeah, they dry the smoke. They smoke the meat and then the meat will stay a longer t- with a longer period of time. Hmm. I should try that. You'll teach me. You'll definitely teach me oh, how to okay, do that. Of course, I'm here for you. Yes. For our viewers also. also. So that when we slaughter a cow, uh, we don't just distribute it in the village. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, when you're packaging uh, for consumer purposes, definitely you also have to brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to tell people about the nutritional information. And also, it, sh- it should have a, a good design. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you want to sell your product, even in the supermarkets, mm-hmm. definitely uh, it will only attract people when it is nicely designed. Of course, yeah, because the catchy, the catchy effect mm-hmm. makes the thing more attractive. The yeah. person will even say, wow, this looks nice. 
let me take this because it it looks nice. Mm. It doesn't even want to know the ingredients or what is the purpose of that. Just because the 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 design looks catchy. Yeah. So if you want to if you want your products to be sold out so fast, yeah. Design have a good package it well. Yeah. Design the cover. Explain to them the nutritional value. Uh, and also tell them the expiry date so that yeah. someone doesn't just pick something and then starts blaming you. Ah, oh, this company did this and this and this. No. In short, it's well packaged, well branded. Uh, you told them the nutritional value and the expiry date. Yeah, and you know, people choose different things for different purposes. Uh, for example, I can use uh, myself mm -hmm. because uh, when I see anything pink, as long as it's pink, and I'm going to buy clothes maybe in, in a in a mutumba, mm -hmm. and I see that there is a, a pink shirt. I don't want to know what is written in, the, in it, That's but I don't know it. what it looks like. I just buy it as long as it's pink, you see? So the, the design also attracts the eyes of the people. Mm -hmm. So that takes us to another point, uh, the seed corn. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll take you back before the bulk and storage. Uh, when you harvest your seed corn, mm -hmm. uh, treat it with a fungicide or insecticides to protect until uh oh before yeah until planting mm -hmm. so when you take this seed corn make sure that it's packaged in a paper or woven plastic bags often with branded labels mm -hmm. i've just talked about the brand you have just talked about the yeah. branded labels mm -hmm. so make sure that you package them in a way that uh, there is no air that will go inside that will make the seed to get um rot to rot or to get uh expired very early yeah actually when you talk about seed corns you'll find that uh when you harvest and you have a good harvest mm -hmm. maybe uh definitely next time when you want to plant you want to plant the same type of seeds yeah so most people keep them yeah most you keep them for your next plant you can even keep half a sack or even one sack so that mm -hmm. next time when you want to plant mm -hmm. uh you have seeds that mm -hmm. will, you are sure that they will do well. Yeah, and your seed, you trust those seeds. It's the seeds you you nurtured yourself. It's the seeds that are going to make even more produce out of your farm. So sometimes you preserve some for your next uh, planting season. Yes. Uh, our next and final one is specialty products. Uh, when I talk about specialty products, mm -hmm. is what I mean. Specialty corn products like cornmeal mm -hmm. uh, should be packaged in paper stroke paper bags. Mm -hmm. Sometimes back in Kenya we have, we use paper bags a lot. But in it Kenya, was, yes, but it was burnt. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, plastic the black, bags. the black, green. green I don't. Yellow. I love those kinds of paper bags because when we used to go to weddings when we were kids, mm -hmm. they used to give us the food with those kinds of paper bags because the plates were not enough. So the kids will be seated on around a certain uh, tree, uh -huh. and then they'll be given food with paper bags. So I have a lot of history with those kinds of bags. <laughs> I always tell you that. We can't end the show without Ayan talking about food. Yeah, of course, <laughs> I love food. <laughs> I was I was also wondering how today we are ending the show without Ayan talking about <laughs> eating. Now nah, I've talked about eating. Are you are you are you are you I'm good? Now, I'm now good. I'm satisfied. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so the packaging usually includes information about the product, mm -hmm. just like uh, the consumer packaging mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, it also has cooking instructions mm -hmm. and nutritional information. Like, uh, let me take an example of saucy. Mm -hmm. Uh, when saucy, when the the product came into the market, okay. most people, including me, mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. Me too. And <laughs> I didn't know how to how how you can cook it. I don't know too. You Until don't now, know to <laughs> when we are sitting here, I don't know how to cook that kind of food. But okay. I've tried once, mm -hmm. and I didn't eat. It was, I don't know, You're it was smelling how... Because I, cook, I cooked it in the wrong way. Now, next time you look at the instructions, the, inst the instructions of the product. So, uh, when you're packaging for specialty products, mm -hmm. uh, ensure that the packaging includes information about the product. Yes, please do that. Cooking instructions <laughs> and yeah. the nutritional information. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the, the product definitely also talk about the expiry date mm -hmm. because hey, you do, don't allow don't allow a buyer to buy something that has already expired yes. and you are able to, you are you are in a position to help them know mm -hmm. the expiry date and yes. also the cooking instructions next time mm -hmm. when you buy saucy I'm sure you you look at the instructions. Don't just tear the paper and you no. haven't. You know that. I didn't follow the instructions because I, I had my neighbor. 
she told me that it is cooked like this and i went and cooked the way she told me now the outcome was horrible and very horrific yeah the one who is following you but <laughs> yeah that is why i learned that sometimes it is good to read instructions sometimes it is good to look at the product before you use them look at the contents mm-hmm. everything about it because uh, there might be something maybe you are allergic to something mm-hmm. and it is an ingredient in that product so make sure you are careful enough on what you are using yes so i think uh, for today we've exhausted uh the part 2 yes of pest yeah and control disease mm-hmm. and management yeah i hope uh all that was uh, of importance to you yes uh, i hope you learned a lot from us mm-hmm. and also uh, we've learned from our viewers Stephanie yeah. who has enlightened us uh, in our comment section just like we only say Uh, we learn from you as mm-hmm. you also learn from us uh, and yeah. this is a farmers media where we connect we learn and, and grow. grow so the moment you connected with you mm-hmm. definitely you learn from us mm-hmm. and we'll also get to learn from you and then we grow together as a family because you know as our viewers you are our family this yeah. is now uh, one family it's yeah. just that we it's just that we don't see each other yeah. each and every time but we are a family Yes. Yeah, and once for all don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts at Farmers Media on YouTube, at Farmers Media on Facebook, at www.farmers.com in our website. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for continuing listening to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Will that be your last word? Yeah. Uh-huh. I think so. So, we have our proverb of the day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Each and every time we have a show definitely we always have to have a proverb for you to take home yeah we have to jog your minds a bit yes yeah so our pro- our proverb of the day mm-hmm. is uh what is pest and disease management okay let me let me let me rephrase it for you sorry our proverb of the day is it don't judge each day Uh, by the harvest you reap but by the seeds that you plant i think that will be also my last word well that's all we had for you uh, our viewers on our today's program thank you so much for joining us today it's been a great moment with mm-hmm. you it's been a great moment sharing with you mm-hmm. it's been a great moment learning from you as you learn from us until tomorrow ensure you continue tuning in for our next show and also ensure you tune in for our tomorrow's show from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. we'll mm-hmm. still be here. Mm-hmm. I've been your host Mary Oswero. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I've been Regina Ayanai. Have a lovely day. does not grow well in acidic soils. Depending on your soil test, you may need to add lime 2 months before planting. Now you need to select the best maize variety for your area. For dry areas, buy a variety that can grow with little water. Always use certified seed. This is disease free and guaranteed to germinate. Consider planting other more drought resistant crops like sorghum and millet in areas that are very dry. When preparing your land, it's a good idea to practice minimum tillage, which means you only dig holes or rip lines where you will plant the seed. Mark planting lines 90 cm apart from row to row and dig planting holes 30 cm apart from each other. The holes should be 15 cm deep. Put two handfuls of well-rotted manure in each hole and add 1 teaspoon of the recommended fertilizer. Mix well, then place one certified seed in each hole. Plant beans between your maize rows. Beans add nitrogen in your soil. You've planted maize and put in a lot of work to keep your soil healthy. Now, you need to manage it well so you get a good crop. Keep weeding as weeds take up food, water, space and light, 
meant for your crop. Fertilizing your maize can really boost your yields. And the best way to know what fertilizer you need is by doing a soil test. Add fertilizer to your maize when you plant. Again, when your crop is knee high. Top dress your maize with nitrogen rich fertilizers such as CAN or urea. For very high yields, it's worth top dressing again when the maize starts to flower or tassel. Investing in the right fertilizer and improving your soil health means investing in your profits. With the changing climate, we will see more pests and diseases, and as smart farmers know, when it comes to pests and diseases, prevention is better than cure. Some of the most common pests in maize are fall armyworm, stem borer, and striga weed. Do the following to reduce pests and diseases in your maize. Plant certified seeds. Keep your farm weed free. Rotate your crop every season and scout for pests and diseases regularly and treat them as you see them. Common maize diseases are head smart, maize lethal necrosis disease, MLND, and leaf streak. All three are caused by viruses and have no chemical treatment. Signs of maize lethal necrotic disease or MLND include drying of leaves, rapid yellowing of leaves, no tasseling, unusual or no ears, and rotting cobs. If you notice an attack, uproot the affected plant and burn them away from the field. It takes both time and money to get a good maize crop. So, don't let all your hard work go to waste. And be sure to harvest and store it properly. It is best to harvest your maize when leaves and husks are dry and the cob is drooping. Once you have harvested, dry the maize on the cob for two to three weeks in the sun on a tarpaulin. Next, use a hand sheller or a machine sheller to remove the maize from its cob. Before storing, you'll need to dry the maize once more. Well-dried maize will store longer and is less likely to mold or rot, and therefore produce a flatoxin. If you store your maize in a siso sack, you'll need to treat your maize first with pesticide, which can be harmful to your health. Make sure not to eat the maize for six months after treating. Or a better option is to store it in a hermetic bag such as pigs, where you won't need to treat your maize because the bags are airtight and kill insects and pests. It is best to store your bags on a pallet at least four to six inches off the floor away from the wall. This will allow air to flow and stop the bags from getting moisture from the floor. 